All right, all right, all right. We are live once again. And I don't know how long we're going to be live. I do have to work tomorrow. I think this is my last Saturday I've got to work until after Labor Day in uh, the fall. So uh tonight we're going to take a look at Ventoy Iventoy in action and uh talk about the revelation that I had 10 minutes after the stream ended last night. So <laughs> um I like the thumbnail. I, I wasn't sure about the color scheme on that. Uh, it's it's from a free music service, and this was one of the um, tracks that I liked a little bit more. Little little techno, little nineties uh, uh, house music, or whatever you call it. So yeah. Now there's a whole liquor cabinet behind you. Ha 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 ha. I had a different kind of night last night. Yes, I, I, uh, I, I, I'm, I'm aware now of some of what happened. <laughs> Sounds, uh, so I wanted to try something. I made the chat members only. I just, I, I wanted to try something. It's Friday night. This is the third night in a row. Um, I just, I wanted to try something, see how it goes. And uh, uh, if if uh, the spirit strikes me, or spirits, uh, given your comment about my liquor cabinet behind me, which is only part of it, um, but uh, I, I may go into the YouTube backend and, and and open chat up to uh, everybody later on. Heading to church to stream, wife driving, so I get to chill watching this. Very good. <laughs> uh, 
Yeah, it's just it's just the chat that's members only on this one tonight. Uh, and and at least for the first half hour, forty five minutes, then I might just go in and open it up to people. So uh, you mentioned my liquor cabinet over here. So my my first pour is, uh, and I can't get it to focus worth a damn, uh, or light worth a damn, I guess. Uh, this is Crown Royal Vanilla. Um, I haven't had this whiskey out in a while. I thought it'd be interesting. I've also got my, my favorite Italian liqueur, Di Serrano. Um, along with my Traverse City cherry, American cherry whiskey. So, yeah. Did you see the new Black Magic des uh, Design products announced today? Uh, not sure about David, but I saw that uh, Da Vinci Resolve 19 came out, and uh, uh, yeah. I didn't look at their other products. I don't have the 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 funds for any other products right now. So got to make do with the the uh, the A10 Mini. Um, I'm interested in their Ethernet products. I used to drink DiSerrano. <laughs> okay, so um, let me bring share my screen and bring this on so last night after we streamed for three hours i decided to take one more look at open sense and you know what and nobody called me out on it last night i had been coming down into this section additional options and trying to set up um, option 66 to 67 manually. I completely missed that three lines above that was network booting. And so I plugged in the IP address and the default BIOS file name. And lo and behold, I'll come back over here. Uh, lo and behold, if I come to my test machine this is a a legacy bios machine hit start hit escape for boot menu hit number three and it was working this morning so that tells me that iventoy is probably not uh running so uh let's see configuration i had this working i had this working i know we'll put that back on that one this hasn't changed we'll save it again Image management, we'll refresh that one more time. We'll come back here. We'll start this back up. And we'll come back here. And we'll restart the service just for giggles. Um, and it's taken an awful long time. Hopefully I don't kill the stream in the process. Well, that's not encouraging. Um, let's reload this. That's probably it. Okay, so anyway, um, network booting. Uh, got the IP address in there. This is the default loader for BIOS. And... I thought this was going to be the default one for 
UEFI, but it still ain't working. Um, and we need to change that to whatever I just changed it to. Um, configuration. SNP only dot EFI. And we'll save that. And we'll restart that service. Okay, now if we come back over here. Okay, so what this is telling me is it's seeing the uh, the uh, EFI file name. So let's try the EFI machine. So this should be UE UEFI iPixie uh, or Pixie version four. Um, this I did not have working last night, and it's still not working. Okay, so then what I need to change is take this, and we're going to get rid of, let's get rid of that, get rid of that. I just want to see something here. We'll restart the service. And we'll shut this one down. Stop it, rather. And try this one. Okay, so I need to take that out completely. All right, fair enough. I get rid of that. And it's just bio strictly. Save that. Restart. And we've got iVentoy. Now I'm going to pop out the console and let's make sure on this. My settings. Okay, local scaling. Let's pop out the console. It might be a little bit bigger for people to see. And it doesn't like me. Uh, all right. Well, so that's not going to help much. Anyway. Um, if we choose, I, I don't know, let's just do Zorin OS and we'll do try or install Zorin. And it might take a minute, but it is in fact loading over the network. So, uh, I've at least got BIOS booting. Um, and, um, yeah, um, I think this is going to be useful because I still occasionally do work on other people's machines. And if I can boot something like RescueZilla or uh, clone Zilla over the network instead of having to get out the USB stick. 
Uh, it just saves me time. So let's see. Uh, da, 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 da. They released a whole line of products using the new 2110 broadcast over Ethernet. Interesting. Haven't drank alcohol in years. Makes me ill. Probably an allergy. <laughs> Uh, sometimes it's hard to see the screen share, especially on a phone. Yeah, well, there's not really a lot I can do about that. Um, I, I've, I've only got so large, I can blow this up and still have it usable for myself to even see it, to record it. So I just need to carry a 65 inch TV in your car. <laughs> Uh, I'm still here. Uh, let's see. And Jacob is here. Might take a minute. Time for a drink. <laughs> Almost never use network booting, but I do see a use case if you have physical machines you need to provision. 99% of my stuff is templates and cloud in it. Yeah. Um, and my understanding is with some tweaking uh you can boot windows uh over the network as well um would be nice to have to image physical things yep i was just making an excuse because we didn't catch the network boot dhcp option ah yeah, well, I didn't catch it either. Uh, I'm going to blame the alcohol last night, but, um, and it was right there in front of my nose the whole time. <laughs> um, anyways, the, the other thing I, I like about the network booting option is just how stupid simple, um, well, I mean, once you've got this up and running, how stupid simple it is to um, add images to this. Uh, you're not having to extract anything and do special crap with the, the kernel versions and, and other utilities. It actually uses the ISO image that you give it. And so what I actually did, and I can make this a little bit larger, I guess. What I actually did, um, to copy stuff over is I just use SCP. Um, so we can just throw, uh, I don't know. Um, and then copy this. And I really need to figure out where the bottleneck is in my network. And so just using SCP, you copy it over. Once it's done copying, you just refresh the list. And the next time you boot a machine up, that extra ISO will be in the list. So... Uh, let's see. Uh, for those watching who aren't members and can't chat, Jeremy does a lot of great member only content streams. It's only four bucks a month. Check it out. Thank you, Joseph, for that. Yeah, either way, like the stream is free. <laughs> um, what switches do you have on your network? Uh, some have lights to indicate operating port speed. Um, I've got one, uh, currently one two and a half gig um, unmanaged switch that's operating. Uh, the other switches are um, 
I've got one Unify manage switch, which is just one gig. Uh, and then there are a couple other unmanaged switches in other rooms because the building's old and I didn't have a lot of choice in having switches in other rooms. So um, I'm suspecting that it's a bad cable somewhere, but um, I will have to spend some time either tomorrow after I get home from work or on Sunday to um, try to track that down and do some testing. Broadcast storm. Um, yeah, somewhere in the chain is a hundred megabit link. Follow the lights. Yeah. Uh, I'm not sure it's that easy. I've looked at the lights before and everything, everything other than my VoIP phone is gigabit is showing gigabit. So I suspect a bad cable. Um, we'll see how that pans out if I can locate the, the problem. So we've got Open Media Vault copied, and so then if we would come back over here, we can just reset this. And it's saying network unreachable, there it goes. Um, no, I didn't refresh the list. I, I still think they could do an auto refresh. Um, minor, minor complaint, but I, I think they could do a, an auto refresh. Oh, I guess I could do that. Maybe that's more legible for you people watching on small devices. Um, I'll restart that just for the sake of argument. And if everything goes right... Uh, Open Media Vault does, in fact, come up in the list. And uh, all is good in the world. So uh, I still I still want to figure out what's going on with the Eufy. Um, uh, the Eufy stuff and why that's not working. Uh, but that's, uh, um, something I can work on over the weekend. Follow the light. Not something you tell to the funeral home guy. <laughs> uh, there's a light at the end of the tunnel. There's also a guy holding a pitchfork, but that's a whole other story. <laughs> uh, I guess the body, if, if the bodies could talk. Uh, if you have time in this stream, want to try the GPS Linux app? Uh, yeah, let me look up that uh, app and uh, I'll just take myself off screen to give a little more real estate here. Um, so let me see you GPS app. So 
I'm not entirely sure. Um, I think the uh, okay. So let's uh, take a peek at these. Um, www.tracar.org. Okay. So Tracar, Tracar, I don't know, stands out among GPS tracking systems on the market by supporting a vast array of protocols and device models. Uh, blah, blah, blah. I'm very curious about this. Um, some mobile apps. Okay. Let's just spin up a VM and uh, see if we can at least get it to run. I suspect uh, we may need to have this in like a, a VPS instance somewhere. Uh, oh, wow, that's old. All right, so I guess we're doing Debian 12.5. QMU agent. Bridge zero. All right. And we'll get uh, Debian installed and uh, at least take a poke around this software. And uh, then we can always collab on a, a, on a video. Um, about the subject at a later time. Um, Okay, Eastern. Keep this thing as small and light as possible. Virtual disk one, leave it in one partition. And we're off to the races. I do like that vanilla. Um, flavor in my whiskey. Uh, let's see. I too pronounce it Yuffie. <laughs> I don't have the device on me at the moment, but it uses NMEA format. Uh, we can port it to AWS later if it works. Yeah. 
Uh, I don't think I've ever seen this screen when installing Linux. 99% of what I do with Linux has been pre-built OS ISOs on the cloud. Yeah. Um, uh, it, I mean, if you've been through one OS install, you, you've been through all of them. It, it's, it's, I, I see little difference between them anymore because it's just, it's, Fill out users, fill out time zone, fill out partition information. Um, scan extra media, no. United States, that's fine. No proxy. Um, you, you know, in Windows, you have to turn off telemetry and all their BS that they try to force on you. Um, in Linux, you, you if you're installing most of them, then you just you you don't you don't activate the uh, cloud services because they make it an option. Um, popularity contest, no. Um, a, a lot of this stuff is opt in instead of opt out, which. Uh, to me is the more um, pro-consumer way to go, but um, I, I'm just interested to see what um, what um, options this software is going to give us, and whether or not we've got to uh, look for a, a different solution. Viewing GPS route history in, on in control. You can see the GPS location of any GPS enabled device by navigating to its device page. So we, okay, that's more setup, download GPX files, getting real time data in NMEA format. So you're specifying a server and host name and port. Um, and service type. Okay. Well, like I said, we'll see what this software gives us to work with and uh, go from there. Grub bootloader, yes. SDA. So let's three see. Uh, not out of this, I can't copy, but uh, yeah, you send it by a signal and then I could just open it up. Five of these pep link devices that all have GPS built in. Uh, continue to reboot. Don't know if I did that quick enough. Maybe. Um, um, no. Okay, so I want to do user ma dash a g. Um, uh, pseudo
Okay. Well, I don't have sudo on here. Uh, all right. I forget Debian. Um, apt update apt install sudo dash y. Okay, now we try this. Okay. Um, which... Okay, SSH is running, and this is 138. Okay, now we can come over here and Linux x64. We're going to copy that link and we're going to do wget this. So I had never heard of this software before we started talking about GPS stuff. So I make no guarantees about any of this. This is my first stab at taking a look at it without reading documentation. Um, uh, okay. Um, Look at the README. Installation instructions are available on the official website because it's not at all useful to have it in the freaking package that you supply. Uh, okay. Um, we'll try it. Created symlink. Uh, blah, 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 trick our service. Okay. All right. I guess I need to look at the instructions. Um, documentation. Quick start guide. Download and install. Uh, open the URL in a browser. Uh, eighty Loaded inactive. Okay, so it's a Java application. Now let's try this again. Uh, 138. That would help if I had the right IP address. 
Ooh, magic. Um, register. Save. Okay, so now, well, would you look at that? Would you look at that? Um, who, who, uh, let's see. Basically, I can track where they go. I can pay for their service to track them, but if it's easy enough to do it myself and I don't have to share my data with another company, that makes me happier. Um, just a fun little side project. Well, it seems pretty stupid simple to set it up. I mean, we haven't done anything with uh, firewall configuration or anything like that. It's running on my private network so i'm not too worried about that at the moment but uh uh this seems good settings so open street map google other things in here interesting um devices this is where it's going to be interesting name identifier which is the imei serial number or other id has to match the identifier device has to match the identifier device reports to the server okay so group, we don't have any group set up. Phone, model, contact, category. So we've got some options there. Calendar, expiration, and able to disable it. And you can add attributes, which is kind of a key pair thing, I guess. Uh, geofences, groups, drivers, computed attributes, description, attribute, type, test, maintenance, saved commands, announcement, server, Speed unit, miles per hour, distance unit, miles, volume unit, gallons, <laughs> time zone, uh, Detroit. I always use Detroit because uh, it doesn't have a space in the name like New York. <laughs> We'll save that. Um, okay. Uh, we could force a 12 hour format location. You can put in latitude, longitude. Uh, that's pretty handy. Uh, permissions. You can enable or disable registration. That's handy. Can put a logo in. Sure, why not? Um, let's see. We want to do uh, not that one. Um, sure, we'll use that one. 
Okay. Must be it's smaller than they'd expected. <laughs> uh, attributes. Let's just save that. Don't know where it's going to put it, but uh, um, it looks pretty easy to set up. Uh, gifted five memberships. And it looks like another five memberships. Or that is just on there twice. <laughs> Uh, well, oh, must be two because one's 938, one's 939. So, cool. Thank you for that. I'm sure some future person is going to thank you for that. So, yeah. So, you give the device a name and then you use the IMEI. Um, I, I still don't understand how they're how it's talking to them, but uh, I've not really done any work with GPS configurations. So, uh, Joe, you got any ideas? Does this make sense for you, or is there something else you want to see on it? Um, Uh, so yeah, I, I suspect this will do what you want. Um, my only question, if you host your own server, the URL is this register device, click the add button. Uh, you want to fill out the name of name and identifier fields can be anything identifier has to match the unique ID your device is reporting to the server. Okay. Configure your device to start reporting the location data to your server for more details on how to configure your specific model check your device manual or contact your device vendor. If you host your own server, your system must have a public IP address. Not all internet providers assign public IP addresses. Um, yeah. Um, current address, yeah, there's my public address. Um, okay. Uh, VPS, blah, blah, blah. Okay. So it sounds like um, so I haven't seen anything specifically saying uh, NMEA. Um, let's see. Parsing a new and uh, introducing NME device NMEA devices. Um, trying to implement for a vessel fleet, blah blah. blah. I was just able to implement Cisco routers with GPS using NMEA protocol. Uses port five thousand five. New to track our as well. I believe all that is needed is to configure your GPS devices uh, to send us data to server IP address on port 5005. So that jives with um, what we saw here. Um, getting real-time GPS data in NMEA format. So this is GPS forwarding. So we put in the... Um, IP address of the server, which would be the VPS we set up uh, on Amazon or whatever we end up using. Port it would be 5005. Um, I can make that bigger, maybe. Um, specify NMEA and 
save it and it should, I would imagine, start reporting. I don't know if it will, but uh, I guess this is going to be an experiment. But it does sound from this thread in their forum like you can, in fact, uh, set that up. So just for sake of argument, I will drop this into chat for you, Joe, if you want to take a look at it uh, in more detail. Um, but it looks like that feature was added a year ago. Is that, does that help at all? Um, I, I don't, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Um, well, that one. So, um, yeah, this is, I guess this has been a productive stream. We did a little demo on uh, iVentoy. Uh, we got this thing up and running. Um, I, I think this is going to be easy. I think we just want to make sure that we set up um, the firewall. <laughs> and uh, since we'll probably want to keep um, SSH access for maintenance purposes, we probably want to limit the um, IP addresses that can SSH in. Um, and I generally put something like, um, uh, well, there's CrowdSec, but there's um, also fail to ban is the one I was thinking of. Um, so yeah, I I think um, I mean it, it took longer to install Debian than it did to install this Tracar or Tracar or whatever you want to pronounce it. Um, so I think it's I th yeah I think it's going to work. Well, good. I'm. I'll throw this out there. I make no no uh, uh, guarantees or warranties expressed or implied. Uh, this is brand new to me, so um, you know we'll have to go through the normal security precautions of the the firewall and the other things just to uh, keep it as safe as possible, since it is a, a compiled jar file, Java. Uh, jar file. Um, it's not like we can look at the source code. Um, I didn't happen to find anything similar that was open source. Um, so, um, yeah, cheers. <clears throat> that vanilla is pretty smooth. All right, we've got eight people watching. Uh, I'm glad this is going to be useful. Um, yeah, I I didn't expect it to be this easy. <laughs> I thought it was going to have like like um, configuration files we were going to have to go through and all that kind of Unixy Linuxy type stuff. That, that you typically find in an open source project, but um, yeah. <clears throat> uh, yeah, it's closed source. If, if I can find uh, something that's open source that does the same thing, uh, in fact, let's, let's just take another look. Since we know that this one's gonna work, um, I love alternative to uh, .net. Ah, track R. We've got nine alternatives. So, uh, let's specifically say open source. <laughs> uh, phone track. 
is free and open source. Um, track it. GPS tracking application based on Flespy.io and built with Quasar. Shows devices on the map and their telemetry messages. Includes a track player. Uh, Wheelon, Wyalon. Uh, that's available as self-hosted or software as a service. Uh, does not appear that it runs on Linux. Open GTS. Intended to provide a generic backend web-based service for querying and viewing GPS-related data. Designed to operate independently of any specific GPS tracking device or protocol. OpenGTS is the most popular Mac and Linux alternative to TrackR. Um, yeah, so I guess there are some alternatives. Uh, I'm going to put myself on full screen, and I guess we can open up the uh, the chat to everybody now that we've got some business out of the way. Um, I can get to this and reload that page because I scheduled this from my other my other computer. <laughs> Um, customization. So can I change this to subscribers while we're live? I do believe it'll let me do that. Okay. Now any subscribers that have been a subscriber for more than five minutes should be able to join in the chat. Um, this was just kind of an experiment to test this out a little bit. Um, uh, let's see. Does this have to be Debian? It doesn't doesn't have to be. Um, let's try open GTS. Open GTS. Okay, so let me bring this back on screen. And let's just screw around with this for a little while. Open GTS. Open source GPS tracking system. Okay, ooh. Old, ugly website. Um, that has not been updated since 2020. Did you still want to try it? Uh, let's see. Well, it, it could be. Uh, <laughs> this hasn't this this hasn't been uh, updated since 2020. Fog at least got an, a single update last year. Uh, okay, so let's see what we can. Um, well, they've got a demo here. Um, They didn't tell me anywhere what the password was. All right, let's just uh, get T. Um, submit form to download. Great. Uh, okay, so we're going to do 
Um, we're going to do this. I don't necessarily need to have an account there. <laughs> yes, I'm one of those people. So I'll fill out their form, but since I'm not too sure about them, Um, we'll do that. Should we re receive your download email shortly? Wow. Oh, look at that. Download GTS. Um, where is the body of the email? Inbox shouldn't be empty. Uh, view attachments no well that's kind of flaky um copy link <laughs> there we go um, don't you get that forbidden? <laughs> okay, we'll play your game. Is that not wow? That's an EML file. Uh, okay, maybe I'll have to put my actual email in. Mm. Downloads. Well, that was way more work than it needed to be. Okay, so now uh, save that to downloads. And then come over here and that's 1338. Um, Okay. April 23. Open GTS. SCP. Oops. Uh <laughs> GTS uh, 
Okay, now. Mm -hmm -hmm. And they got config.pdf and. Yeah. <sighs> okay. Uh, copy. And let's have a 216.74.100 colon slash temp. Users. Okay, now we can go here to download. Oh, look at that. There is a config uh, <laughs> PDF. You would think I might have done things like this once or twice. Ugh. First release was in 2007. I was still working on my undergraduate degree at that time. Uh, supported platform system architecture. It's another Java app. Unzipping, installing, and of course they don't have links because that would be too easy. We search it. Okay, now, uh, let's see. Oh, all right, well, fine, fine. Downloaded to the temp directory. Okay. All right. Um, uh, copy. Okay. Okay, now uh, let's do this. Okay. Unzip. Hmm. 
Uh, there is. That's what this is, is the Linux version. It's just, you got to go through extra hoops because that's what open source projects do. Uh, so that was the copyright on the, the manual, but the, um, the website, um, copyright ended in 2020 and it seems like that last, the last version was released in February of 2020. It doesn't appear there's been any update since. You don't have to go down this rabbit hole. Okay, well, I'll cut my losses here then. <laughs> um, all right, I am going to step out for just a moment, but uh, I'm not going far. All right, I'm back. Uh, either way, it was interesting. You're very welcome. Oh, 555 for your efforts. Thank you very much. Where is everyone? Um, did I not? I don't know what I did with the ads tonight. Did I? Oh, that's why. Whoops. Okay, that should be a little better. <laughs> I had it on balanced instead of conservative. My bad. All right. Anyway, uh, I guess OpenGTS is a little bit more of a bugger. <laughs> um, so let's see uh, hey Terrell I'm sorry I missed your uh, uh, message earlier we were getting our geek on and, and trying out some new software and Jacob has joined us. All right. So, um, guess I'll do that. I I don't really have a whole lot else to report. Um, I'll throw something out out there just because. Uh, uh, well, Joe, you can give your two cents worth. Uh, uh, or, or maybe Ashley will pop in. Um, so one of the things that we're having to do at the library is 
bring our website up to ADA compliance. We've got about two years uh, in the state of Michigan to accomplish this. Now, here's where the rub is. Um, there is work I can do. There are plugins that will help the process. Uh, we've got a WordPress website. I reached out to two of our vendors today, one that supplies the library catalog system. Uh, we've got a widget of theirs on our webpage. Uh, and I had been poking around in the code on it and, um, you know, it has hard coded some values like pixel values instead of EM or REM, um, which tend to lend themselves a little better to smaller size screens, um, The other vendor uh, is one that does our um, event calendar stuff. It's, it's specifically an event calendar system built for libraries. Um, so I reached out to both of those vendors today and they are both uh, telling me that they're aware of the situation, which is good. Um, uh, and in both cases, they tell me, oh, fourth quarter of 2024. So at least I can put a revisit date on those two items and focus on other things. Um, so the rub is that we have on our website old newspapers that have been scanned and converted to PDF. These old newspaper clippings, uh, newspapers that have been scanned and converted to PDF, they are not accessible in a way to meet the ADA uh, requirements. And there are a bunch of them. So let me... Um, pull this up just so you've got a an idea and and let me remind you before I I show this to you uh, I am not a graphic designer I did not intend to be a a web designer um, so uh, I was trying to make this as simple and easy as possible for people to find stuff don't judge me beyond that <laughs> So this is our local and historical resources page. Uh, so we've got some microfilm that goes back to the 1860s. Um, we've also got yearbooks starting in 1950 uh, and most years up through 2005 or something or 2015, I don't, I don't know which. Um, but I mean, even if we pick on the 1950s, uh, we'll pick on 1957. Why not? So if we look at the newspaper from 1957 and we did not do the scans ourselves. This was an outsourced project. I think this, this was done through the, the prison system here in Michigan um, so a bunch of prisoners, um, did the scanning and, um, you, you know, you can access the PDFs, but the problem is some of them, um, like this one are not searchable. Uh, so... There's that issue. There's pictures. Um, and, you know, you inspect the accessibility stuff. And, you know, it's going to BP and moan at you. Um, and 
it's just one of those things that when we did this project or had the prison system do this project for us, we had no idea this mandate was going to come down from our wonderful government because, you know, picking on little libraries that have little funding is uh, a great thing to do and put us in a position where we could get sued if we don't comply. So I've floated a couple of different ideas to the boss. And uh, one of those is that we turn over our newspaper archive to the Library of Michigan and let them futz with it. Um, I don't know what's going to happen, but... Um, the, the fact of the matter is that there are a boatload of PDF files and I got a quote from one company and they wanted uh, $7 per page to convert PDF files um, to be ADA compliant. Um to do this manually is going to take an eternity. Um, so, you, you know, it's, this is saying it's four pages, but it's, it's two pages wide. And the next question is, how do they define a page? Is a page eight and a half by 11? Or is a page, a single page of the PDF? Um, you, you know, I, I'm, I'm not wanting this job to fall on my shoulders. <laughs> it's where I'm at with this. Um, my eyes would go buggy if I had to look at old newspapers day in and day out for, you know, the next 18 plus months to try to get this all converted and still keep up on my other responsibilities as the technology person. Um, but yeah, it's, um, uh, and what is the, the yearbooks? This is, this was a, a mandate from the publisher of the yearbooks. I think that's it. No. Um, signing into my work email on my other screen. So, um, oh, 2019. I was close. 1950-2019. Okay. So, um, yeah, we'll take 1960 and load the yearbook. So this is 144 pages. And just this one yearbook would cost $1,008 to convert if we had the service do it. Um, so yeah, it's, it's a thing. It's, it's something I'm really, really not looking forward to dealing with. Um, but anyways, where is everyone? <laughs> Hello, 
again, Jacob. Terrell is a new gifted member. Woohoo! And Ashley's in here as well. Thank you for stopping in, Ashley. Um, sounds right for AI. Right. Um, again, we don't have a paid version of an AI. And in order to upload files, you've got to have a paid version of chat GPT or whatever else. Um, I, I, I don't know. And I, I figure the AI would get us 85% of the way there, 70 to 85% of the way there. And it's still have to have some manual intervention for each file, unfortunately. Um, I just wish there were uh, a little bit more thought going into this. Um, but like the 2015 yearbook, that's 183 pages, so that's going to cost even more. Um, it must be taking a minute to load. Oh. Maybe there's some blank pages. Anyway, um, yeah, because you got to tag photographs for ADA compliance, just like you do on a website. It's basically like alt text. Um, it's just mind boggling how they expect a small library to afford to do this. So, yeah, um, I, I don't even know at this point. I'm, I'm so over this that, um, this, this whole thing alone is, is making me want to push up my, my, uh, changing to a different job. This would be a custom AI likely. Yeah. Um, and you would think that with this kind of mandate coming down that, you know, maybe the state of Michigan, uh, would provide access to libraries for this kind of AI to do this conversion. Um, had to become a member, appreciate all the entertainment you provide us. Um, well, thank you. <laughs> um, I, I don't know. Um, I kind of got bored with web design in like 2003 or four or five. And so I've stuck to templates and WordPress stuff. Um, and um, even for my business that's registered, um, I'm very much considering taking down my website and um, just doing a Facebook page for the business and calling it a day. I don't want to do that. But um, yeah, there's. I, I'm not gonna. I'm not going to sink a whole bunch of money into a small business website to make it ADA compliant when I'm not getting any business from the website. And so my solution will be the website goes away. Or it becomes um, a single page static website that has the name of the business and the phone number and email address on it and nothing else. And yeah, if 
if somebody tries to sue over that, I will close the doors on the business and um, it'll be over. Um, so I, I don't know. I'm, I'm very, ticked off about this this whole thing with with the ADA compliance and y- you know it's it's um I understand that we need to try to make things accessible but I think they're taking it too far um and they are punishing small businesses and nonprofits and libraries and other things just so they can pass legislation that's going to make a minority population happy and put other people out of business or force them to dramatically change how they conduct business. Um, interesting. Uh, okay. So anyways, um, if, if all of you have business web pages or websites, what is the, uh, law like in your state? Are you required to bring everything up to ADA compliance? And what's your deadline? Uh, Or do you have insurance to cover you in case somebody does try to sue you? Um, I'm truly interested. um, Because for me, uh, other than personal sites, um, I think I'm basically done with web stuff at this point. Um, I will outsource it to somebody else. And if I, if I have a business that warrants a website and, um, you know, then I can sort of wash my hands of the situation because any, company that I go into a contract with to build and maintain a website would have to cover um, making it ADA compliant and um, making sure that, you you know, it stays that way. Uh, And then I will be completely hands off with it. Um, But this is this is uh, it's it's mind boggling what our politicians do and and how they end up screwing us in the process. And it's the same whether it's local politicians or national politicians. They're they're just looking out for their own behind and nobody else. So I don't know. I'm, I'm just, I've been a little ticked off about this this whole week. (laughs) Probably should hit a little bit of, of, uh, water.
Okay. Um, let's cancel out of that. All right. Um, let's see. I have no idea on the laws. Spun up an AWS VM if you want to SSH in. Refill the whiskey first. Do I do whiskey this time or do I do De Serrano? I think I'll do De Serrano. Should have ice for this, but that's all right. I haven't cracked this bottle open quite some time. This is only 28% alcohol by volume. The uh, Both of the whiskeys I've got in this room are both 35%. Um, okay, so let's quit out of that. Um, Uh, save to downloads. Well, let me copy that. Um, okay. Um, we'll do this. Um, Okay, I will bring this back on screen. Ooh, I got small. Um, okay, so um, so Debian six one. Um, and I am admin. Uh, oh. Okay. Um. Do a little maintenance first. This should go pretty fast. Um, yeah, look at that. So, cheers. Mmm, amaretto. I don't know how many years I've had that in my <laughs> liquor cabinet. Um, sage D current. Okay. So, Open up HTTPS to the internet, so you should be able to get to it once installed. Okay, so we'll do that track our thing again. Um, 
I just need to come to the end here and we'll close that and that, 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 and that, and that. Um, Okay, so let's come here and download installer, and we're going to do this one, copy link, and uh, Okay, so sudo dot slash trancar dot run. Okay, system cuddle status trackr dot service. Uh, so we need to um, start oh. uh, I don't actually have a password. <laughs> Um, so oh, let me move myself out of the way. That might be better. Um, since I've got to start the, um, hmm. Can you send me the admin password or uh, make, um, hmm, let's see. We either want to send the, how do we want to do this? I'm going to need to um, be able to run this as root in order to start the service. So, because that's, um, oh, wait a minute. Uh, try this. Okay, never mind. <laughs> um, And it's running. Um, so what? That's port eighty eighty two one seven two dot thirty one thirty two twenty nine. That's mine. Uh, IPA one seventy two thirty one thirty two twenty nine. Um, is that gonna get it? For some reason, it's not loading. Uh, uh, 
Uh, let's see. Enable JavaScript to use track our GPS tracking system. So the page is running because uh, I can I can see it using curl, um, but it for whatever reason is not loading there. So. Um, Um, uh, status. UFW service. No, eight, no H top. Uh, okay, so. There's Trackar that's running. Um, is there a firewall on the AWS instance? I guess is the question. Um, look at chat. Um, okay. <laughs> um, no, I still got this set for HTTPS. I can just, uh, is that going to load? That's still not loading for me. Uh, it's in the DNS for SSH. Um, uh, So, it's in the DNS for the SSH. Uh, oh, okay. That might do it. Oh, yeah. Uh, dot. <laughs> dot. Dot. Hey, look at that. Um, Now, did uh, did you want me to register a user on this and then open up registration so you can register one yourself? Um, I guess that's the that's the uh, that's the question. Hey, Ezra. Okay. Uh, what email do I want to use? Um, do you use that one? And we'll not that. Um, do this off screen. Uh, I'm going to generate a password, a nice strong password. Like 40 characters should be good, right? Save. Okay, now I can bring this back up. So
So look at that. All right. So um Now we need to have, what is this, server settings? Oh, well, I guess we start by putting this in miles per hour and miles and US gallons. Uh, you buggers. Air. Um, location permissions. Uh, so that should turn on registration. So, Joe, I guess uh, I would say see if you can get into it. Uh, I'm actually going to put this in a different browser completely and see if it brings up the okay there is a register link there now joe um I have plenty of access to your stuff lately and taking up on this Rolling Stone concentrate. <laughs> Feeling good. Surgery Monday. And before they redo all the hardware. Yeah, that sucks. Other than physical pain, but doing fine. Yeah. Um, very good. So it, it appears to be up and running, Joe. Um, so I think uh, the next thing, the next, the next uh, real piece would be for you to register for an account uh, on this platform. Um, that way I'm not the only one with access. Um, <laughs> and then... Um, Plug plug the IP address information into your uh, into your uh, PEP wave. Um, and uh, again, that um, that link I dropped into chat earlier had the. Um, I think it was port 5005 uh, is uh, is what the um, Yeah, port 5005 uh, with your um, with the public IP address for this server. And then that should let us tag team the rest of this um, uh configuration and and we might be able to get this actually um functioning tonight <laughs> with a little bit of of luck um uh do you see my registration so um let's see here 
users. I do see your registration. Um, so, so that was the first one to sign up. I'm an admin. So permissions admin. Joe, you're now an admin of your own server. <laughs> <laughs> um, fortunately, oh, that's right. You did mention that at the beginning. My bad. Um, okay, well, at least you're you're in. You we you've got your account built, um, and um, then tomorrow you can you can test. I guess. Um, your laugh at admin made me laugh out loud. <laughs> um, yeah, well, so I, I suspected that what it was going to do since I was the first one to sign up for an account, it was going to automatically make me an admin. Um, so anyways, uh, you should be, you know, if you end up at the studio tomorrow, you should be able to uh, log in, plug in the information, and uh, see if you you get anything populating. Um, that would be kind of cool if you did. Um, again, I, I <laughs> I've read enough of the instructions to get this up and running. Uh, I I just I, I make no guarantees after this. Um, <laughs> it's a fun little project. I'm I'm very curious to to see um, how this is going to uh, turn out and find out how you might be using it going forward. Um, I I do find that to be to be interesting to me. Um, but, uh, uh, and you, you know, I did see mention that, um, uh, on one of their pages somewhere. Uh, okay. Mobile applications. Uh, So oh, track our software is completely free and open. Oh, it is open source. No limitations on commercial or private use. Okay. I, I misspoke earlier. I didn't read that far. Uh, turn any smartphone into a GPS tracker. Use your phone as an SMS API service. Um, what's the client? There's a client for... Uh, uh, Android and iOS. What happens if we install the client? T R A C C A R track our client. Uh, okay, let's install it. I might have to send you a device to play with now. That could be fun. That could be fun. Um, I'm curious to see. Distance, angle, info. Um... Status, clear. Um, so, I know this is going to be too small for people to read, but I'm going to try something. Um, devices. 
add device. Identifier um, eight one seven three one two. Identifier device reports to the server. Save. Um, I don't know if this is going to work. Don't know if this is going to work. Um, that's showing is offline. So, uh, start service. while using app okay so fine it's not optimized for battery service running info Um, is that not updating? So, wonder if I have to put in Uh, device identifier. So that's the identifier from the app. Um, I wonder, I M E I. Um, well, don't know if it's not doing anything currently. I thought maybe this would, okay, so let's take this oh, refresh page um, refresh page I just opened up server to the world okay I suspect um, I need to put in my IMEI number on this device for this device so let's let's try that i don't know if this will work Okay. Um, it's still showing offline. Uh, let's see. Let's take. 
take this off Wi-Fi for the moment and see if um, dot one six five dot eight nine dot seven five colon eight zero eight two Hmm. For whatever reason, that doesn't want to load on my phone. 50? Oh. Well, if I stop fat fingering things. Before 165 dot. Eight nine dot seven five colon eight zero eight two. Okay, that does come up on my phone when I am just on cellular data. So now I'm curious. Um, Yeah, I'm not telling the phone a port number anywhere. So I'm not sure if that if that app will do what I'm wanting it to do. Um happens if I It doesn't get, oh, here we go. Server URL. Um, that would help. Okay, one more time. Um, five, four, dot. One six five dot eight nine dot seven five port fifty fifty five. Okay, now that that's put in. Uh, if I reload this, will it show up online? Mm, not yet. Not yet. So let's look at devices one more time. So that makes me wonder if I need to go back to the identifier in the app which is eight one seven three one two ho 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 would you look at that I'll blow this up so everybody can see it. So um, I'm going to step out of the office with the phone just to see if it um, registers um, any sort of a speed or a total distance. Um so I'll be back in a minute or two.
Oh, look at that. Total distance 0.18 miles. At zero miles per hour. I'm okay with that. Um, <laughs> this is kind of exciting. This is kind of exciting. Would you look at that? <laughs> uh, there's my location. And it's still 0.18. Create geofence, Google Maps. Well, there's my latitude and longitude. <laughs> um, all right, that's kind of cool. Uh, Apple Maps, Street View, Share Device. So who, who's the next guinea pig? Uh, Joe, you've got a phone there, don't you? Uh, you you, you want to download the uh, the iOS app and, and get yours installed on here too, just for grins? I, I think this has been one of the more interesting streams I've done in a while. Uh, honestly, <laughs> and people are missing out, but, uh, I, I know 9 PM streams aren't everybody's cup of tea, but y you know, it's, uh, um, it's like find my iPhone, but open source. Yeah. Looks like a video idea. Yep, I I think we're gonna have to uh, spin up another server and uh, um, yeah, I think this is cool. I'm trying to send via postman as if I were pep wave. Okay, nice. Um, who knew that, uh, that, that these live streams would, would turn into a testing ground for future recorded videos. Um, uh, well, this, this may or may not have been in the works for a couple of days. <laughs> um, but I've, I've got the munchies now, so this is like my, one of my, vices in life Twizzlers um I'm pretty impressed with this actually <laughs> I'm pretty impressed with this So cool. I like it. Reports. Uh, Pixel 6a today show report. Doesn't have anything to report apparently. <laughs> um, um, hmm. Do 
don't know where. Geofences, groups. Saved commands. Uh, copy text. Um, what? You can send an SMS. <laughs> That's cool. Um, send from CMD. Um, I don't, I don't know if though, if that will, um, I don't know what command I would put with that to get it to trigger. Uh, hmm. Let's look at their documentation. Commands. Doesn't really help me there. Um, hmm. Configuration file. Um, Up to track our conf. Okay. Use track our XML instead. Okay. Um, Doesn't give you much. <laughs> oh, they didn't give the database a password. Okay.
entry keys. Uh, a bunch of ports for different things. Um, wow, this supports a lot of different things. Wow. Um, it has Starlink. That's interesting. Open GTS. Wow, that's got a bunch of stuff, bunches and bunches of stuff. Huh, okay. Um, what did you say? Well, um, okay, so Docker image, uh, image upgrading tray car, server architecture, protocol documents. This is kind of cool. You know, it makes me wish I had a a GPS device besides my phone. <laughs> um, let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Um, is there a post API to point the NMEA string at? Um, good question. Uh, let's see. That's the most recent one. Uh, there's PHP code that's supposed to do the post. Uh, I can link you this page here in the chat okay go away um hey christopher welcome in sorry i haven't been looking at chat been kind of geeking out on this little project <laughs> What's all the fun going on here? So Joe's explaining that. Um, so 
Makes me want to drive to the studio. <laughs> Are there any public GPS transponders? Uh, like for NTP. Um, I'm not sure if, if it would work on a watch or not. I look good in HD. <laughs> uh, all right. Um, well, uh, let's see. Hmm. Do we have anything that talks about NTP? Just about time stuff. Um, hmm. Man, that's good questions. I, I'm I'm afraid we're we're kind of reaching my <laughs> the limits of, of my knowledge on this product and on uh, uh, GPS in general and doing some of this stuff from the command line. Um, I'm not familiar with George Hotz or Hotz. Um, I guess I need more context. <laughs> if you can provide some, Christopher. Who thought I would get this into this <laughs> i've only been streaming for just about two and a half hours um this is this is pretty impressive i am I'm, I'm i'm pretty happy with getting just the the very basics of this up and running obviously there are configuration pieces that I, I would want to go back and change if we were going to leave this up long term but uh uh yeah he's been doing car ai lately and if i recall gps stuff okay okay maybe i have heard of him um you got it running which is always dope yep thank you uh yeah and, and honestly bef before tonight i had um given joe a uh sent, sent messages back and forth with joe about three different possible uh gps softwares that might do what he wanted um this is the one we chose to start with uh and it was well, I, I, I should back up. Um, the first thing we did was set it up locally on on uh, one of, on, on a VM on my network. And then Joe set up a, uh, an Amazon instance so that we could actually test it. Um, and then I hooked up my phone to it, which is what it's pulling. Uh, the data from here right now. So uh, <laughs> I, I guess we've come a, a decent way in in uh, a fairly short amount of time. So uh, zooming way out, that's that's the little pin drop of where I'm at. But um, I, I'm kind of stoked about this and and doing a, a deeper dive. Uh, project on this with you joe i i think this could make for some interesting um uh content on the challenge and something different i don't i don't think um let's just search on youtube just just for the 
heck of it. Um, let's say within the last year. So looks like there have been a few videos on it. Um, the top one got 1,100 views. Uh, there's one of 1,400 views from six months ago. Uh, yeah. Um, this is kind of cool. This is kind of cool. Uh, I, I definitely think there are things that we could uh, explore with this, like the SMS um, functionality um, bypassing um, even signal. I mean, this would this would be our little <laughs> test bed. Um, that could be kind of fun uh testing uh gps and what i'll try to do is i'll try to remember to turn this on uh in the morning when i drive to work uh the app on my phone just so that there's actual data flowing into this thing um but uh and, and then what i'll do is i'll take a different route to work uh from what i'll take when i come home and that that way it'll show you know a little bit of variation but um uh i think this could be a fun little project uh let's see i was hoping to also see your iventoy but this gps stuff is fun i set set up a small fleet of vehicles that work with gps nice uh, you could definitely pin this with Zapier. Yep. Um, Jarvis, bring the car to the front. <laughs> yeah, uh, I think this will be fun to play with and and uh, get a little data flowing in for a few days. Um, now, if we just convince Joe to put the app on his iPhone as well, then you know we'll have two devices. But uh, um, or I don't know, maybe you've got a, an iPad or something that has the GPS functionality in it as well. I, I, I don't know. Uh, but yeah, I definitely think this could be fun. Um, so Christopher, just to, to double back on the, uh, the, uh, iVentoy stuff. Um, I covered that at the beginning of the stream. Um, so, uh, the way I've got this set up now, I've just got uh, a VM that doesn't have anything on it for testing. Um, it's not configured to work with UEFI. I haven't figured that part out yet, but doing just a standard BIOS boot, um, it does in fact bring up my menu uh and i've tested a few of these uh i know zorin will work um so i can load the the zorin os from across the network um so um that uh that was really the part that I showed off tonight. I, I did show off a little bit on the back end of, of the the um, uh, open sense. Um, last night when I was attempting this, um, I was being stupid apparently, and I was trying to use additional options uh, to set options 66 and 67, uh, which of course are the next server and uh boot file well uh i didn't notice and nobody pointed out to me that three lines up there is network booting and that's where you have to put in the ip address for um 
iVentoy and the default uh, BIOS file name. Uh, so I'm going to continue experimenting with the U UFI uh, configuration. And once I can get that part hashed out, I will do a video uh, talking about that. Most of the videos that I found for iVentoy were all using Unify. And so having a video out there with OpenSense uh, is something different. So um, I'm hoping that that's going to be a value add in some way because I looked and looked and looked and couldn't find, <laughs> I couldn't find one out there. Um, and yes, I have too many tabs open, um, but there's, uh, it's still loading, I guess, but, um, uh, as you can tell from the background, it, it is in fact Zorin OS. <laughs> um, but yeah, I'm, I'm pretty happy overall with, with what we've got, um, accomplished during this stream tonight so i may as well go till midnight and hit three hours again and uh cut off at that point so i can wind down and get some sleep before i have to go into work on a saturday um but um anyways that's that's what we've that's what we've been doing tonight. Um, I I initially thought we were just going to talk about iVentoy, and <laughs> um, Joe got me going on this GPS project, and so we just kind of ran with it, um, which is, is kind of cool. It's kind of cool. Um, I think my first exposure to anything with GPS was uh, uh, in 2004, so 20 years ago. Um, I was taking a class um, my first semester back to school, and uh, um, one of the it was a science class, and so we had to do this scavenger hunt thing around campus with a, a handheld GPS unit. This was before all the cell phones had GPS built in. Um, so, yeah, I'm that old. Uh, <laughs> um, but, yeah. Definitely want something for Windows 11, 12, and some Linux distros for work. Yep. Um, Windows is going to be a little bit of a challenge. I've got to figure out what the... What the um, issues are with that because i know like for windows 11 you've got the secure boot uh requirement and vent iventoid doesn't currently work with secure boot turned on so that might be an issue uh i think the developer is working on that but it's it's not there yet uh, network booting, brilliant. Yep. I have Unify. Yep. My wireless is still Unify, but since my USG gave up the ghost last year, um, I ended up with a, an open sense, uh, box that I built. Um, well, I bought the box and I just installed the OS <laughs> specifically. Um, technically have Unify and Edge. Yep, that's what I've actually got at work. We've got the the Edge router and the Edge switch, and then the Wi-Fi is all Unify. You have tiny tabs. I have 1,500 or so loaded. <laughs> uh, me too, dreading going in tomorrow. Got to run cable. Yeah, I think this is the last Saturday I've got to work um, at the library. Uh, until after Labor Day. So I remember scavenger hunts brings back some hilarious memories of failure. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. 
Well, you know, um, uh, for Windows 11, I lost all faith with it being easy to do. Yeah, pretty much. And the advertising that goes on is just, if I had hair, I would pull it out. <laughs> uh, computers and women, they'll make you bald. <laughs> no offense, Ashley, if you're still watching. <laughs> uh, you have to work full shift. I've got to work uh, 9.30 to 3 tomorrow. Which it is what it is. I I haven't had to work that many Saturdays over the winter, so I I really can't complain. Still trying to use Postman standby. Notice my hair is gone. Yep. <laughs> and, and 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 uh if you if you listen to if you've ever listened to George Carlin, uh uh uh, he, he tells white guys that we shouldn't shave our heads because we, we can't make it look as cool as black guys. So, uh, I, I guess you're, uh, uh, making me look bad tonight or something. I, I don't know. <laughs> All jokes aside, I'm glad to have you here. <laughs> uh, I, I think that was a skit where Carlin also talked about, uh, guys wearing uh baseball caps backwards uh and and uh white guys are lame and and can't make it look cool and uh black guys uh after the after they're old enough to co uh collect uh social security carlin said turn that mother around <laughs> I have my beard in full effect now. <laughs> well, hey, uh, it's all good. Um, and and uh, uh, I, honestly, from 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 a good place. I, I'm saying these things. I, I mean no disrespect or, or uh, insult. Uh, I, I I do like to ask, however, if if uh, my my more uh, what's the politically correct way to say this? My more melanated uh, audience members prefer the term black or African American because I know some people are on the fence or sit on one side or the other of that fence, but. Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, anyways, um, so better turn it around then. <laughs> well, hey, I haven't worn a hat in a bunch of years, but I've been I've been shaving my head for the last twenty. Um, I, I was starting to uh, I was starting to look like Friar Tuck with a with a with a, a, a bald spot in the middle of the back of my head, and uh, I wasn't really a fan of that. And so I thought, well, let's just get rid of it. And uh, yeah, what's crazy? Most people I know in IT or MSP, we all lose our hair. Won't matter to me as I'm mixed. I'm black, white, multi-flavors. Well, hey, <laughs> it's all good, man. It's all good. Uh, and Indian. All right. Um, I, I, I'm a uh, Western European mutt. Um, English, German, Dutch. Uh, and, and on St. Patrick's Day, I claim 3% Irish. Um, the rest of the year, I don't talk about it. <laughs> um, but yeah, <laughs> right on my man, right on. Um, <laughs> I, I, I just, uh, uh, I don't know. Um, 
don't mind me tonight. I've I've had a glass of whiskey and a, and most of a glass of amaretto, uh, not not full glasses, mind you. But um, it's Friday night, so you know I'm I'm getting my drink on a little bit. <laughs> I got some Irish and Scottish and a dab of French. Ah, uh, that's quite a mix. Ah. <laughs> uh, yeah. So I, like I said, I just, I just tell people I'm a Western European mutt. Um, <laughs> beyond that, eh, all bets are off. Um, whiskey sounds good. I may have to get some tonight myself. Yeah. So my, my whiskey of choice that I started with was uh crown Royal vanilla. Um, I I've, been sitting on this bottle for a while and then my other bottle of choice that i've i've got more more recently is uh traverse city whiskey company uh american cherry edition uh and i bought this mainly because they're only about four hours north of me <laughs> three three hours three or four hours north of me um Got some of that. Good deal. Um, so sounds good. <laughs> um, anyway, um, let's see. Oof, 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 oof. Um, uh, some Python code. Oh, I I think I'm too tired to try to do Python code tonight. It's been like five or seven years since I've looked at much Python. Um, but uh, um, let's see what we can do. Maybe... Um, did we get anything? Now, I don't think that would show up a device if you did it command line because they've got a specific part of the back end that's where you put devices in. That's reports. Um, uh, so it's not in devices. Um, There should be some way to do that. Should be some way to do that. Um, uh, let's go back to uh, home admin. Um, and what? What? Uh, mm, what do we want to do here? So test.py um, paste. So we'll take this out. No, oh, that's right. Because I'm doing this. Five four one six five one six five dot nine dot seven five I think eight nine seven five um Uh, okay, so the NEMA and MEA data 
is this copy text let's do this paste Okay, so what if we comment this next to the sign out? that device ID let's just give it an ID um, track our URL ID equals device ID data equals any NMEA data Response equals request.get URL. Um, So we're missing uh, Python three if statement. If else. If else, so that shouldn't um, okay. Test.py syntax error. Fail to send data. Okay, so what I'm wondering here is I want to try one other thing here. NMEA underscore data equals and then I want to do single quote. What I want to do GPRMC. Close quote. Fail to send data. Um, I 
Okay, so yeah, I got that. Um, so okay, let's exit out of that. And we'll clear the screen and we'll try this. It's got the right ID equals Joe. Well, it didn't come back with an error. I guess that's a, a good sign. not showing as a device but I wonder um, I wonder if we've got to add as a device um, Try this in Python. Okay. Um, uh, piano. Um, And MEA underscore data equals single quote paste end quote exit save yes. Fail to send data, 400. Um, hmm. This is perplexing. And I've got like two minutes before I need to wrap up. So... Um, yeah, um, we're, we're going to have to regroup on this. Um, Joe, I, I think this is going to be a fun project and it gives me an interesting excuse to dig back into Python a little bit, uh, before turning my sights on, uh, getting my security plus uh certification which the library is going to pay for so <laughs> um there's 404 dollars i will get reimbursed when i take that um so uh love python uh, God, I'm two weeks rusty. <laughs> I'm like seven years rusty and <laughs> trying to do this after I've had alcohol. Um, <laughs> two minutes of fun. Get your rest. Thank you. Uh, no rush. This was fun. Thanks for playing. <laughs> right. <laughs> How about a nice game of chess? <laughs> no, let's play global thermonuclear war. <laughs> See, I start drinking a little bit and I get the giggles and uh, maybe it's more entertaining for people. I, 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 I don't know. It does something to my head and, and I just, I can't concentrate on really technical stuff when I'm drinking. Um, so anyways, um, I bring myself full screen and we'll wrap this up. 
thanks everybody for coming. We still got nine people watching, which is kind of amazing since it's midnight Eastern time. Um, I will definitely be back on Sunday. Not sure if I'll stream tomorrow or not. Uh, this has already been three nights in a row. So, um, taking one night off is, is not an awful idea. Uh, plus I've got plenty of other projects that I could dig into, uh, here. Like, I don't know, upgrading my servers and, and, uh, tracking down this, uh, network issue that, um, is, is slowing things down. Um, I, Speaking of that, I wonder if, um, oh, so just for the sake of argument, Zorin OS did fully boot up. So if I do try OS, and it'll probably be very laggy since it's got the ISO mounted over the network and all that kind of fun stuff. But, um, anyways, that, that did, that did work. Uh, so, um, check one last time. Okay. Let me throw this back up on screen and okay. It didn't show up here, but this is just the device list. Uh, so theoretically it might show up in reports um i wonder if we've got to build a device in uh the software for it even though it's even though we're sending it from the command line i i don't know that's that's uh that's going to require some thought and, and digging into some documentation again. So, um, I wonder if it's in logs, bottom left. Um, I got reports and maps and settings. Uh, I do not have... Where are you seeing logs? I've got server. Um, Geofences, no. Um, Hmm. Yeah, I'm, I'm, it's probably right in front of my nose. I'm not seeing logs anywhere. Oh, reports and then logs. Okay. That's reports, logs. Ah, nothing at all there. Um, active users, maybe? No. Okay, that's interesting. Um, all right, well, I'm sure we'll figure it out. It's probably something we are, uh, we're just missing. Um, and maybe when I've got a clear head, when I get home from work tomorrow, I will uh, play with the Python a little bit more and see if I can't uh, uh, craft something that works at least as a, a, as a test. So, but anyways, on that note, I've got to get some sleep. Um, 
thankfully it's only a six hour day tomorrow and uh um then i'm done <laughs> so all right everybody have a good night and again thank you for coming out this was fun and i hope somewhat entertaining uh and productive in some way uh but yeah um would love to hear feedback from people watching this after the fact uh, let me know in the comments have a good night christopher See you later, Joe, and anybody else that's still watching. <laughs> Have a good night.